Good morning, folks. We've got solar wind intensifying this morning. We look at water, climate, cosmology, and the distant universe. We're starting over at spaceweathernews.com, and we're finding the last 24 hours on our star with the southern coronal hole departing, northern coronal hole incoming, few bright active regions but no sunspots in them, and no eruptive behavior. It is the solar wind gaining intensity this morning, rise in stream density and speed as the magnetism of the plasma flipped over as Earth crossed the heliospheric current sheet. Crossing that magnetic boundary can have effects similar to a CME, and it usually heralds the approach of a strong coronal hole when it does. Expect plasma speed to rise throughout the day and tomorrow. It'll be from that southern opening, while that northern opening system has solid power and will begin facing Earth tonight. Meanwhile, the mid-range earthquakes continue at the crust. 5.8 was the top quake yesterday, just north of New Zealand. Kicking off the news articles, we're looking at global groundwater anomalies over the last decade and a half. The full video and accompanying article describe the state of numerous areas and the causes affecting the changes in soil moisture, from agriculture to urbanization to natural variability. The big news from the ESO, ALMA, and the VLT yesterday was a combined effort to detail a region in the slender space between the Milky Way stars, where you get down to the galaxies and galaxy clusters. And when you zoom that far in their empty voids, you find the stuff that is extremely old and far away. Bucking the trends and expectations of every single Big Bang model, the presence of oxygen signals them to dynamic star formation activity back at an ionization time of the distant past. It is the earliest and furthest detection of oxygen and this star formation. One cannot help but be critical of this in-the-box article where one scientist claims corn is going to have a bright future in the Midwest under climate change, because the temperature and humidity changes expected will not drastically affect its water consumption. The problem is that this analysis takes no account of hail, flood, tornadoes, or late cold events like we had this April, all of which are on deck to intensify as we approach the modern cosmic ray maximum, likely this century. Finally, it wouldn't be a day of preprint releases without a dark matter chess piece getting blasted nearly off the table, Recall that as CERN wiped the GEV particles off the board, they want to look larger and smaller. Here we go, 1 to 2 TEV scale, just larger than GEV, appear to be official misses too. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.